Thank you, Dr. Alka. Come, I'll just make a comment. Because we are running, running short, short of time, time I will... will... Yes. yes. Absolutely. Don't delay. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, Achana, for making me part of this symposium. The topic is very close to my heart, and your passion is infectious. I was sitting with you, and I was feeling those vibrations after your talk. Seriously. So, um, sailing through the special situation, we spoke about the crisis and diagnosis, how to, uh, what is the role of patient education, and Alka has already taken us through the journey of insulin, initiation, and adherence, and monitoring everything. So this is going to be a little, since the beginning we are using this word, physical management, psychological management, and social management. So, um, uh, So, uh, we all believe that, you know, adaptation is the key to survival. Whenever a child is growing, a pa uh, pa parents have to adapt, child has to adapt, two teachers have to adapt. And imagine a child growing with type 1 diabetes. So, adaptation is the key to the successful management of type 1 diabetes. Uh, I won't say patient, type 1 diabetes, individual or a child. So, this is the stage where a child realizes what is the social meaning of diabetes. Whether it is type 1, type 2, doesn't matter. But when the child is newly diagnosed at a very tender age, a child is very much overprotected and, you know, are taken care very well. And this is the time when mother's heart is filled with worry and stress. So rather than treating that child or counseling that child, we have to counsel the mother first because that is the first thing the child is going to move out of the house. And uh, school people should know, you should know that whenever a child is taking admission, it is your responsibility that your patient or your child with type 1 diabetes should never be refused admission. That is the first thing because I've seen, uh, you know, parents going from school to school for admission for no reason. So this is where a doctor has to come in picture and show them the legal mirror that you cannot refuse child on the basis of type 1 diabetes, that is first thing. And definitely as and when the child grows up, he shouldn't be, you know, uh, denied access to school picnics and sport activities. A child will be uh, given, you know, that ha tight hand holding will be slightly loose that time. You can uh, have a teaching session first to, uh, you know, his friends or some caretakers in the school. The, the school has to take some amount of responsibility and it is not that great. So that social meaning of the uh, diabetes is recognized by the child when he goes to the school. And um, there was a one, uh, uh, I would, I'm very proud to uh, share this project by United Diabetes Forum. This was a project called UDF Kids, creating awareness about type 1 diabetes by going from school to school. That school may be having just one uh, type 1 child, but just imagine the child is going to spend eight hours in that school. So it is high time that the students also accept the situation, uh, teachers also accept the situation, and we had covered about more than 30, 40 uh, schools, and the response was overwhelming. And child also has to come out of that box that ch child should know that the child always wants to, doesn't want to disclose the identity. That is the time we should be telling that child, suppose if your friend had type 1 diabetes, would you hate him? Would you have some different feelings for that child? So that should be taught to that child as well. So these are few pictures of UDF Kids project. I can't read. Now the child has gone from preschool to primary to adolescence and teens. We all have been parents and we know how difficult it is to manage any adolescent. And just imagine now adolescents with type 1 diabetes. So there are going to be some issues like depression. There may be some subclinical depression, but we need to probe into that subclinical depression. There are going to be, especially with females, there is body image concept. So there are going to be some eating disorder, uh, disorders that may be giving rise to some we know a uh, serious glycemic variability, so we really need to probe into eating disorders. 
there can be some substance abuse uh, at a very early age. We need to dig into that. The counselor's help can be taken. Child may not, I mean, the teenager may not come up with uh, disclosure that I am into substance abuse, but that this, these things need to be uh, probed into. As simple as tattooing, you know. Tattooing is something maybe in the rural area or in the town side. This is supposed to be, you know, one of the uh, thing which, which is done with peer pressure. So there are some ADA recommendations. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm part of this program. There are some ADA recommendations that if your glycemic control is good, type 1 can have tattoo. So that's a great relief for some you know, modern uh, type 1 children. So independent, feeling of independence, rebellious, skipping doors and meals, we need to probe into this. Huh? Whenever A1C is on the higher side, or maybe A1C is normal, but the child is not growing or a teenager is not ha attaining puberty, there can be some missing or skipping of uh, doses and meals. Depression needs to be um, dig into. Tattoo ge uh, gender. When a child achieves puberty, there will be some ma the management difference whether, he, uh, whether it is he or she. There is going to be definitely, and ADA recommends that at puberty itself, preconception counseling has to start. They should be given idea about congenital malformation and other problems at the time of puberty so that that type 1 child prepares the body for early pregnancy or whatever so that she doesn't land up into infertility. This is something which I just mentioned. We covered substance abuse and career and lifestyle. Definitely, uh, you know, biological clock gets disturbed because of late night studies or they like some ch uh, teenagers, they want to work um, in malls or, you know, uh, with different uh, day night schedule, then you have to adjust. You can't deny anything. First thing is you can't deny anything. You just have to hold their hand and give them support and give them practical tips. So marriage is something I didn't find any literature. And marriage is something, if a type 1 is getting a good life partner, that is the indication that you have to get married. Now, at the end of lecture, I would like to ask ma'am that there is always a confusion. There is no problem in getting uh, two type 1 uh, getting married together. But I mean, uh, the question is whether it was advised in the past that type 1 should marry a non-diabetic so that the caregiver is healthy for a long time. But I think now this is high time that we believe that two type 1 can get married. Then, now these are, huh, this also I wanted to clarify. This is from ADA Genetics Journal that if a type 1 conceives before the age of 25, the risk is 1 in 10. And if she conceives after 25, which actually we don't advise, we advise them to conceive early for better reproductive uh, function. But in the journal, it is given that when she um, marries uh, after 25, the risk is lesser. So I don't know what is the explanation, frankly. And if a child is, has developed uh, type 1 diabetes before the age of 11, that means before puberty, there is a, um, chances are double that child may, I mean that lady may have type 1 diabetic child in the future. So these are some things which are found genetically and it's mentioned in one ADA genetics journal. Preconception counseling, I, ju I just mentioned that, you know, uh, in a girl it should start at the time of puberty. A1C around 6.5. Fasting porcelain target should be very, very tight. Talking about uh, infertility, we are coming uh, as and when the lifespan is increasing, children are getting, I mean, the type 1 are getting married. Issue about male infertility. Though when that uh, male in adulthood has normal HbA1c, we need to look into that child's reproductive uh, function from the beginning. Er erectile dysfunction, depression, these are a few things we need to look into. So I think this is all, ma'am, uh, theoretical. Probably I'll stop here. Just half a minute. So it is a lot of hand holding. One hand cannot hold 100 hands. So 100 hands have to hold each, other ha each other's hand and form a support group. There are a lot of uh, learnings from uh, people like, uh, I mean, uh, Dr. Achana Sarda has been, she's amongst us right now. So 
there are so many learnings from, I mean, we follow you on FB social media's advantage and we take so much inspiration from you. So JDF is, was, the, I mean, was the first uh, uh, parent organization for type 1 diabetics and they have thousands of type 1 diabetics with them, which are uh, like one family. So Udan has proved that yes, my topic was marriage and pregnancy. So ma'am has proved that type 1 can get married. Ma'am has proved that type 1 can get pregnant with, with a natural course. I, I didn't get the <laughs> picture of baby on the screen, but she delivered probably normally. And uh, diabetes, Jazz is doing good work. She is a type 1 diabetic uh, herself and she is an ambassador for type 1 diabetes. We have a small group called uh, Sweet Angels. And I cannot end this presentation by saying, Guru ne dilanyana rupi vasa, ami chalabuha pudhe varasa. So we are going to follow sir's footsteps and follow his legacy. Thank you.